Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you for joining me. We're going to go through a quick study here. Um, and the title of it is, What Does Being Born Again Mean? Amen. We give Jesus all the glory. We're going to use Bible. We're going to even go back, as you can see here, into the uh, original Greek meanings of the word. This is very important. We have a lot of people out there that do not know what being born again means. Um, some people believe you don't need to be born again to enter heaven, and other people um, say you do need to be born again, but you can never be unborn again. Um, so they say if you say a sinner's prayer or whatever, you're forever going to go to heaven no matter what you do here on earth, and that is a lie from the pit of hell. Amen? So we're going to answer the question, what does being born again mean? mean amen and we're going to do it biblically so let's just first of all make sure we know that one must be born again to enter heaven the bible is the final authority amen let's get to it john 3 3 says jesus answered and said unto him verily verily i say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god you must understand that jesus says right here buddha muhammad Joseph Smith, the Pope, or anybody else that's out there, amen, Alan White, it doesn't matter. We can go on all the way through all the false denominational um, cults, amen. There is no other way to see the kingdom of God except to be born again. There's no other way. Oprah, nope, Oprah's wrong. There's all these ways to get to heaven. No, ecumenicism will lead you to hell. One way to get to heaven so everybody else goes to the eternal lake of fire. Amen. John 3, 7 says, Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. And 1 Peter 1, 23 says, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. How? By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So we can see that being born again is a spirit spiritual thing, not a physical thing. Well, of course, not many people believe that it's a physical thing. Amen? Of course not. But they have the attitude where, well, once you're born again, you cannot be unborn again. Well, this is a spiritual state. When you become born again, God does not turn you into a Calvinist, which is one of the most wretched uh, doctrines out there, which says you don't have a free will. So you can have a free will to follow God, and you can have that free will and I mean, you can use that free will to follow him for the rest of your life. And then Matthew 10, 22, uh, 10 says, And those that follow him forever, amen, will be saved. We're going to get into it a little more. I'm not going to get into um, the study on once saved, always saved. I'm going to post it here. We have pages and pages and hours of video on that, okay? So, again, Matthew 10, 22, um, I paraphrased it there. But it says, um, you'll be hated by all for my namesake, but he that endures till the end shall be saved. So if you endure till the end, if you live righteously and holy till the end, you'll be saved. Otherwise, you can be saved at one point in your life. You can choose to go back into willful sin and go against the holy God. And if you die in that willful sin while you're still a sinner not obeying Jesus, then you'll go straight to hell. Amen? There are many heretics out there that believe once someone is saved or born again, they can't become unborn again, which is doctrine from the pit of hell. We see that way back in Genesis 4.3. Remember, the serpent said to Eve, go ahead, bite that apple. No problem. No problem. It says, the serpent said to the woman, you shall surely not die. And we know what happened after Eve ate the apple. It has affected us for, 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 for thousands of years. Amen? There's consequences to sin. Um, we know what happened to a former disciple that Jesus chose and who he sent out, who was abiding in Christ. He sent him out as an apostle. His name was Judas. He was once saved, not always saved. Amen? And again, we have a complete study on the lie of unconditional eternal security. 
also known as once saved, always saved. And as I said, I won't be getting into those details here. So the lie we hear from the lukewarm false church is one cannot become unborn after they are born again. So we're going to answer the following question. Can someone be born again, then become unborn again? Now, this is very, very, very important. What does born again mean? We must prove that it's spiritual, of course. It is. Um, well, the first definition of born, we have on the left-hand side here, G1080, geneo from the Greek. Of course, it means born just in and of itself. Uh, it means to be begotten, to be born, a woman giving birth to children. Amen? But we're looking at it in the biblical sense, um, in a Jewish sense, and now a Christian sense, one who brings others over to his way of life, to convert someone. So born again means you're converting to abiding in Jesus, to become a Christian, to become Christ-like. Amen? God making men his sons through faith in Christ. Amen? That's what happens. Once you believe, God will make you his son. You can at any time stop believing, and you won't be a son, but you'll be a bastard again. Amen? And again means from above, from a higher place, of things which come from heaven or God. It means anew, over again. Amen? One must confess and forsake all sin by a mind changed so that he lives a new life and one conformed to the will of God. Proverbs 28, 13 says, He that covers his sins shall not prosper, prosper, excuse me, but whoever confesses and forsakes their sins shall have mercy. Confess and forsake. A lot of people believe I just have to confess my sins to God. I can go on sinning in thought, word, and deed every day. I don't have to forsake it. I'm going to struggle. You know, I'm in the flesh still. No, the Bible says you must walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Amen. 1 John 2, 3 through 6 completely blows that false teaching out of the water. Hereby, we do know that we know him, know Jesus, if we keep his commandments. He that says, I know Jesus, and does not keep his commandments, which is the moral law, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps the word in him, verily the love of God is perfected. Hereby we know that we are in him. Now listen to verse 6 very, very closely. He that says he abides in Jesus must walk as Jesus walked. No, you're not going to become Jesus. No, you're not a little Jesus. No, you're not God. No, you can't atone from your own sins. Jesus did his work on the cross. Now Jesus commands you to do your work while you're breathing here on earth. He that says he abides in Jesus must walk as Jesus walked. That's God's words, not mine. Amen. A new life means without willful sin. The old life was full of sin. We conform to his will in thought, word, and deed. So what is God's will? 2 Corinthians 5.17 5, excuse me, says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. But I was this, but I but my whole family is this. I have generational this. I have my all my family was an alcoholic. I was abusive. But stop. Stop. If you are in Christ, you are a new creature. And what happens? Old things are passed away, and all things become new. That is a definitive statement. Not you're getting to be more like Jesus. Not that you're slowly and slowly going to be less and less depressed. No, Jesus is joy. There is no depression. There is no anxiety. There is none of this. There's no alcoholism, pornography. There's none of this in God's kingdom here on earth and also in heaven. Amen? I'm going to give you an example with the police. You know, a lot of people, um, you know, just, just don't understand the clear words of God. But let's say I knew the police chief in town and a few of the sergeants, and um, uh, I made a deal with them. I donate to them big money, you know, to their police association, and I am allowed to speed and whatever around town. I don't have to obey the speed limits or anything. This is this is the analogy I can think of of the people that are false Christians that are here on this earth. And I believe 99% of people that say, I believe in Jesus, I'm, I'm a Christian, are not Christians. In fact, a research just came out that says 
6% of the whole general population of the United States doesn't even have a biblical worldview. My Lord have mercy. I think I'm pretty close to that figure. And I say 99% plus of people that say they're with Christ have no idea who, how. We know them by their works, by their fruit. They're living their own life. They're living the American dream for themselves, for their families. They don't do anything for Jesus, really. No, they go to church once a week and maybe give some money to sponsor a child or two or something. They don't live their life so They're not a new creation. Old things, they still go on the fancy vacations. They still go to the beach with all the immodesty. They still do this, they still do that. They go to the movies, disgusting Hollywood movies. Amen? They still have the TV blare and all that. No, 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 no. Amen? So if I can drive around my town and I'm not going to get caught by the local police, that doesn't mean I'm still not breaking the law. So a lot of you sin, and a lot of you sin in secret, amen? A lot of you are sinning in secret, and you think you're not breaking the law. Men are sitting behind their computers looking at, uh, you know, uh, it's porn and, and uh, all this sexualized stuff. Even uh, like, like a football, all these sports, they have the cheerleaders on. And you're bringing your children, and you're letting your children watch these commercials and it, it go on the computer. I mean, it's disgusting. This is not of Christ, amen? So you are breaking God's law, even though you don't get caught or it might be hidden or it might not be in the general public's view, amen? So you have to purify yourself, and that's why I wanted to give you that example. Let's look at what 1 John 3, Jesus did his work, you must do yours, amen? 1 John chapter 3, verses 3 to 10 says, And every man that has hope in Jesus purifies himself, even as Jesus is pure. 1 John 2, 6 says you must walk as Jesus walked. 1 John 3, 3 says you must purify yourself even as Jesus is pure. Whosoever commits sin transgresses the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And you know that Jesus was manifest to take away our sins. And in him there is no sin. So whoever abides in Jesus does not sin. Continue reading with me. Whoever sins has not seen Jesus, neither has known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous. No works, Jim. No, he's not going to. Well, you're talking about a works. I'm reading the Bible. He that does righteousness is righteous even as Jesus. doesn't say you have Jesus' righteousness no matter what you do. Amen? It says he that does righteous, he that works righteousness in his own life, he's living righteously and not sinning in thought, word, and deed daily, is righteous, even as Jesus is righteous. But verse 8 says, he that commits sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this very purpose, the Son of God was manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Are you a new creation? Is the Holy Spirit dwelling inside you? If so, then the works of the devil have been destroyed. The depression, the anxiety, the gambling addiction, the porn addiction, the, 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 the alcoholism, whatever it was that was binding you before, selfishness, whatever, anger, unrighteous anger, that's broken. Jesus destroys the word. Don't listen to these false pastors in 99 out of 100 churches out there. It says in verse 9, whoever is born again, amen, of God does not commit sin for his seed remains in him and he cannot sin because he is born again, amen, of God. In this, the children of God are manifest. And the children of the devil, listen closely, whoever does not do righteousness is not of God. Oh, Jim, but I'm all, I'm always going to, I'm always going to sin. I'm always going to, I'm always, I hear it all the time. No, whoever does not righteousness is not of God. He that commits sin is of the devil. Amen. Neither he that loveth not his brother. So one can live holy and truly be born again. However, if someone chooses to go back into willful sin, then going back into it is an unholy act. We never lose our free will, praise the Lord, and they will not be accepted by God. So that person chose with their own free will, which you don't lose after being born again, like all you wicked Baptists think, and others, a lot of evangelicals too, ceases to be born again. If you go back into willful sin, you're sinning against God willfully, and you 
I'm not born again. You know, I ask people when they say that. We're always going to send. I said, deep, you know, let's say like out of the store and passing out tracks or I'm preaching. Did you sin in the last minute? No, I just went to the store. Did you sin in the last 10 minutes? No, the last hour? No. Earlier today? I'm not sure, but probably. Okay, so you at least went the last hour or two without sinning. Well, if you can go an hour or two, you can go a day, you can go a week, you can go a month. You see what I'm saying? And, and, but they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. They can't see more than a minute ahead of themselves, right? So they will give their eternal life back if they go back into sin. If they were once maybe truly born again. It's true we can't work our own salvation. Meaning we can't, uh, like the wicked Catholics, the sacraments and this and that. No. But the Bible clearly states that we must work righteousness to be in a saved born again condition. Amen? So we must work righteousness to attain biblical perfection, which we see in Matthew 5.48. It says, Be ye perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect. A very simple verse. Amen? And that means we'll have our past sins covered. Oh, Jim, Jim uh, Jesus, um, he covers our past, present, and future sins. <laughs> Give me a verse. They never come up with a verse. I give you a verse that tells you that's not true. Romans 3.25, listen closely. Whom God, talking about Jesus, whom God has sent forth to be a propitiation through faith in Jesus' blood to declare his righteousness. Oh, see, Jim, I told you. Wait a minute. For the remissions of sins that are past <laughs> through the forbearance of God. You get God's imputed righteousness for sins that are past past, never present, and never future. When you have that mindset, you'll fall. You're done. You're doomed. You are purged from old sins, never current or future. So if you're born again, listen. 2 Peter 1 9 says, but he that lacketh these things is blind. So I was blind for six years believing the lies of e unconditional eternal security, etc. I can be eternally secure as long as I'm abiding in Christ. I know I'm saved. Praise the Lord. We just read it above, 1 John 2, 3 through 6. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Amen. Hebrews 12, 14 clearly states, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. If you're not living holy, you will not see Jesus at your last breath. And as I said before up top, one uh, in the beginning of this, one must endure till the end for final salvation, meaning one must live holy and blameless until their last breath to receive eternal life. And I'll say in Matthew 10, 22 again, you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but he that endures till the end of their natural life, he that endures till the end shall be saved. We're not finally saved until our last breath. Don't believe the lies of uncon of of uh, unconditional eternal security. Right? Jesus is a perfect, holy, blameless sin offering. I'll put the link to the sin offering teaching there and not a sin covering. Let's listen closely. 1 Peter 1, 13 through 17. And we're almost done. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you by the revelation of Jesus Christ. How? As obedient children. Amen not fashioning yourselves according to your former lusts. In your ignorance, you can't claim ignorance on Judgment Day. Those times have passed. So this means not being unholy, which you once were. You need to not be uh, disobedient children. Amen? But as which he called you is holy, so you need to be holy in all manner of conversation. Conversation in this context means everything you do. The way you talk, the way you walk, the way you dress, the way you live, the way you treat others, etc. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. It doesn't say, I'm going to make you holy, don't worry, continue sinning. No. It says, be ye holy, for I am holy. And then it says, if you call on the Father, without respect of persons, judges every man, uh, judges according to every man's work. Jim, you, these are Bible verses. And you're going to be judged based on what you do. Not what you just say you believe. That's only one part of it. You've got to prove, you've got to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You've got to endure to the end. 
He's going to judge every man's work. So it says, past the time of your sojourning here in fear. Just add something here real quick. If you're not passionate for God, if you're not on fire, Revelation 3.16 says, Jesus, I'd rather you be hot on fire for God, always passing out, you know, passing out tracks when you can, preaching the word of God, especially all you men, women teaching other women how to live for their husbands and, and raise a family and stuff like that. This is the work of the Lord, taking care of the orphan and the widow, amen? Calling out sinners to come to repentance, amen? If you're not doing that, if you're born again, the Holy Spirit will have you doing the work of the Lord. Now, yes, that doesn't mean you can't work a secular job as long as it's not sinful and you have to compromise your faith, amen? There's a lot of jobs out there that if you become born again, you're going to have to leave because they're sinful, amen? But there are a lot of jobs that are not, amen? Okay, so one must be blameless, upright, living holy to continue to be born again. So listen very closely. Proverbs 11.20 says, They that are of a forward heart are an abomination to the Lord, but such as are upright in their way are his delight. Again, you must be upright. Ephesians 1.4, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love. And that was the beginning of mankind. That was God's original plan. Amen. Ephesians 5.27, that he might present it to himself a glorious church. I have to fix that. I put an extra uh, O in there. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Colossians 1.22 says, In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight, if ye continue in the faith. Again, we see the word continue. We see endure. We must do these things to get saved at the end. Amen. So it says, If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and not be moved away. Moved away from what? The faith. Moved away from belief. Being born again, truly, and not swaying from that, not becoming unborn again. Amen? So, if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and not be moved away from the hope of the gospel, which you have heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, where I, Paul, am a minister. Amen? And we see it again in Philippians 1.25, that ye may be blameless, praise the Lord, and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. And boy, I live in the United States in particular, but there's a lot of countries out there that are just, if not, well, this is one of the most wicked countries in the world. But we certainly live, all of us, every country, is a crooked and perverse nation. Amen. First Peter, as obedient children. We just read this up top. I just wanted to say it again. Not fashioning yourselves according to your former lusts in your ignorance. Not sinning like the old man. Remember, the old man has to pass away and all has become new if you're in Christ. Then you're truly born again. Amen? In the Greek, the word blameless means without blemish as a sacrifice without spot or blemish morally. Without blemish, faultless, unblameable, perfect. I can't be out there proclaiming I'm a, I'm a, you know, blood saved, a Christian, praise Jesus, praise Jesus, and be out there sinning. Amen. You can't do it. That's not being unblameable, faultless, and perfect without blemish. One of my favorite verses in the Bible is James 1.27. It says, pure and undefiled religion. Everybody likes the first part of this verse, but they don't even read the second part or they don't want to because they know it has another command in there to be spotless. Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. To visit or help those that visit. and You know, you can even help just by giving. Amen. Your financial means. To visit the fatherless and widows in their time of distress. And to keep yourself unspotted from the world. Again, another command. Read James 4, 1 through 6. Draw nigh to God and then he'll draw nigh to you. Listen to the conditions in James 4, 1 through 6. Please read them. Amen. No, oh, excuse me. James four six through James four six through ten. I'm sorry. Let me let me just confirm that. James four six through ten. Just read James four. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. James 4, 6 through 10 specifically. But it has. But just read the whole of James 4. It's not that long. It, it has command after command on how you to cleanse your own hands, you sinners. Live holy. Just read it. It's it just there are so many verses in the Bible that talk about how to be blameless, holy, spotless, righteous, etc. Amen. So you must have pure religion. You must keep yourself unspotted from the world. Holy means in scripture and its moral and spiritual significance, separated from sin and therefore consecrated to God. Sacred. It's used of men and things insofar as they are devoted to God. Indeed, the quality as attributed to God is often presented in a way which involves divine demands upon the conduct of believers. These are called hygos, saints, i.e. sanctified of the holy ones. So you're holy when you're living holy. And we're going to get into Revelation 21, 11. Just hold on one more second, okay? No, one more, two more minutes. The sainthood is not an attainment. It's a, you don't just get there and that's it. I'm a saint forever. Come on. It's a current state in which God's, God and grace calls men. Yet believers are called to sanctify themselves constantly with their calling. Amen. We see in 2 Timothy 1.9, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works. Again, we can't, we can't atone for our own sins. Amen. But according to the purpose and the grace which Christ has given us before the world began. See, this is talking about before the world began. He doesn't call individuals. Amen? This is explaining how God had a plan from the beginning. Cleansing themselves from all cleansing themselves from all defilement, forsaking sin, living holy as a manner of life. And we see in first uh, Peter 1.15 that we spoke of. I'm not going to repeat all these down here, but you can click on the website and they come up or you look at it in your Bible. Amen? Be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? 2 Peter 3.11. Amen? And then you want to experience fellowship with God and His holiness. The saints are thus figuratively spoken of as a holy temple. And I'm not going to get into this all these verses, but we become, as Christians, a holy priesthood. Amen? A holy temple. A holy nation. Amen? And that's based on how we live, how we do things for God. Amen? Not to work out, uh, not to do the job that Jesus did, but we must work out our own salvation with fear and trembling. Amen? The person that goes back into sin is not living a new life. They went back living the old sinful life. Therefore, they become unborn in the newness of life. This is, again, you don't lose your free will after you become in right standing with God. You can always give up that um, born again um, experience that you had and the born again status because it's a spiritual state. It's not something that happens and it's all of a sudden that's it. You're not born again if you are willfully sinning. Amen. We we, we read above in 1 John uh, 3, 3 through 10, uh, verse 8. 1 John 3, 8 says, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. Let's go three more sets of verses. 1 John 5, 18 says, We know that whoever is born again of God does not commit sin. But he that is begotten of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. And we know the whole world lies in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God has come, and he has given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the one true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Again, another command. I'm going to move myself over here. Now, this is a very important verse. Last two verses. Real quick. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. So he that's a sinner, he's, let him be a sinner still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. But he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. This has nothing to do with what Christ did on the cross to atone from your old sins. This is saying what you're doing today, you yourself, me, myself, and I. Amen? He that is unjust, he that is a sinner, let him be unjust still. So an unjust person does not go to heaven. Amen? 1 Peter 2, 20, no, no, no matter how much they say they believe in Jesus, if they're not walking in holiness, they're not going to make heaven. Amen? 
and then we're going to finish with 1 Peter 2.21. Even here unto you were called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example. We need to suffer for Christ. If you're not hated by all for his name's sake, especially the false Christians, you're not going to make heaven. Amen? You'll be hated mostly by the false Christians if you're truly born again. Amen? And it says, leaving us an example that you shall follow his steps who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Amen? I have a link down there. Click here to learn how to truly be saved. I pray you do that. I have a contact form here if you ever want to reach out to me. I'm here 24-7 to answer any um, questions you might have. Uh, about salvation, about Jesus, about how to walk holy. And there's hundred, a few hundred teachings on my website about all different things from, uh, well, of course, salvation to sports to makeup to um, the great falling away. I mean, there's just the false church. I've got 35 videos, short videos on all the false teachings in the false churches today. So I pray you uh, are edified by them. Again, any questions, reach out to me. And um, I thank you really much for listening. And now I hope and pray you do understand more what it truly means to be born again. And if you're not, I pray you become born again. Seek them. To Jesus be all the glory. Amen.